think he was an actual like comic character. Yeah, he's real. I mean, the comics have been running for so long that I'm sure like all the bonus characters in Marvel One actually happened. So like in the Marvel universe, I don't know about Orange Venom, but did Gold War Machine real? Probably. That's probably happened. Pretty sure Armored Spider Man's probably happened too. Yeah, why not? Yeah. <laughs> um, but yes, yeah, so this is Attempt to Speak Episode 7. Because I'm pretty sure in the last episode we said we'd figure out which one we're on. Yeah. So we this is Episode 7. And for this one, we're going to talk about... Well, I mean, we're going to talk about fighting games, but... Not specifically, not too much about the games themselves. This is more going to be about fighting game controls. So, the evolution that, like, the, the controls in fighting games have gone through. So, like, this is more focused on the things you had to do to play these fighting games. And not so much the games themselves, although we'll probably get into some stuff here and there. Okay. Um, so, we're going to get ancient. <laughs> Story with um, the Tori. <laughs> you might want to pull out your phone just so that way you can pull up some images because I have all my notes on here. Oh, okay. Um, just so that way you can see some stuff too. Um, I'll, have to, I'll have to do it in the video too. Yeah, yeah. Post editing. I'm gonna say yeah. Like I, I can. We can find images. You can put them up so that way anyone who listens to this or watches it, depending on what gameplay is being shown, I don't know, um, mm. will be able to also see what we're talking about. Um, so. I did a lot of research to try and make this as accurate as possible. I can't guarantee it's accurate. I may miss some things. I may say some things wrong. This is the internet. That's normal. But I'll do my best to make it, to make this as accurate as possible. And from what I could gather, technically, the very first fighting game was Sega's Heavyweight Champ in 1976. It was an arcade game. Okay. Um, so Sega started the beat your friends up craze. <laughs> they would. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's a few Sega's heavyweight it's, champ. Yeah, Sega's heavyweight champ, 1976. Um, so it is this one. Um, so how you would play it. So uh, I don't know if you could pull up the arcade machine. Yep, right there. So how you would play it is that there is a boxing glove controller. So these red things here are the controllers. There's one per player because it's a two-player game. Right. Um, and I believe, from what I could tell, you could only use it to punch, and you couldn't. There's no way of moving. You would just use the glove and you would move it around to oh, punch. So, oh, so they would stand in place. Yeah. Um, there is no footage of this original game because there was one on the Master System, I believe, called heavyweight champ but it's a different game it was still sega um so for this version of the game there's no footage available and from what we know as of now there may only be like one cabinet in existence that it's... probably doesn't work <laughs> um, yeah because sega ain't fixing this and it's so outdated it's uh it's potential it's so what we can speculate is that like the number up here kept a score and there wasn't a life bar. The number of times you hit the opponent, maybe? I probably. You'd probably get a point for hitting the opponent. Not 100% sure, because there's no game footage. All we have is, like, a picture of the cabinet and an image. There's, like, one image. And, like, that's it of the game. But that was, like, the very first one. Yeah. So, fighting games started out where you just had a, a, a metal boxing glove. And you moved it around to hit each other. It's where it began. <laughs> um... The next game that I found was uh, Vector Beam. It was Warrior in 1979 for the arcade by Vector Beam. Okay. Um, so this one was uh, a game that was developed by, hopefully I say this right, but Tim Skelly, who uh, yeah, Tim Skelly. also went on to be an art designer for Sonic 2. So, All right. one evolution. Yeah. <laughs> uh, which was much later. Um, but, uh, so it was, uh, um, yeah, it was this one. Um, That's a fighting game? Yes. Um, so, it, it generally had vector graphics because it was, it ran on, like, a vector 
So it had it used like vector graphics. So it was just like lines. Yeah. Um, it was intended to control with two joysticks, one for movement and one for swinging your weapon. Um, due to a low budget, control was changed to a joystick and a button, in which uh, the button changed your character from move mode to weapon mode. Move mode? <laughs> yeah, so the joystick would move, You so you were in move mode. You hit the button, you switch to weapon mode, and you use the joystick to swing the sword. And then when you wanted to move, you hit the button to go back in move mode. Dang. <laughs> so it was just the joystick and a button, and that's it. Um, from what I could tell, uh, there are only about 10 or 20 cabinets still exist. Um, and only, like, a single-digit number of them still work. Dang. So at the most, there's, like, 20 cabinets, but, like, less than 10 of them work. <laughs> As of now. <laughs> um... So, and there is footage, but like obviously, as you could tell in the image, it's just like there's like the vector people that moved around, and there are like pits that you can hit each other into. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> the next one is a game called Samurai from 1980 in the arcade, and it's also by Sega. Dang, Sega was all in that fighting <laughs> game craze. They wanted to be the first. Uh, now here's the thing: this game. Um, was actually, like, a beat-em-up more than a fighting game. But, like, I guess during the time, beat-em-ups and fighting games were considered, like, the same. So beat-em-ups were still were called fighting games for a while. Yeah. And obviously since this was the very beginning. Um, but, yeah, so it's... Uh, yeah, it's that one. Yep, so you play as this guy. And these are the enemies. In which uh, you move around with the joystick and you hit a button to attack. And you can move in four directions. Um, so it was essentially like one of the first beat em ups ever. I believe yeah. like you kill some enemies and then there's like a boss you can fight. I think. Not not a hundred percent. I wouldn't on that. be surprised. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, it was like one of the first beat em ups where you're just a samurai. That Sega just started everything. <laughs> um, then the next one is uh, Karate Champ. By Data East in 1984. On the NES, right? Uh, this is the arcade version. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, that got sent to the NES. Uh, yes. So, the arcade version um, controls with two joysticks. Um, in which, in a combination of using the joystick, one joystick to move and the other one to attack, there's, like, anywhere from, like, 20 different moves that you get in the game. Oh, boy. Which is a lot. Um, let me see. Yeah, I'm pretty positive that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and there's still no life bar. Uh, round ends um, when someone gets hit. So it's essentially you and an opponent, you're swinging at each other, and you go down and you get hit. And mm -hmm. then you either get one point or a half a point, and first person to get two points wins. And that, that was just how the game played. Yep. <laughs> um... Like an actual karate match. Yeah, so it was one of the first ones that really felt like a fighting game where you could actually, like, you know, it had, like, footsies in it where you would, like, move around and, like, try to time your attacks and, and guess what your opponent's doing. So it was the first game to actually have, like, fighting game gameplay when you think of fighting games now. This right. is really, like, the first one to have it. Um, the next game was... Uh, Karateka, 1984. I don't know what that is. Uh, you can look it up then. Uh, K A R A T E K A. Karateka. Karateka. And is, it, is it like a karate game? It is a one-player game. Yep, it's that one. Uh, it's one player. Um, it was one of the first. Like fighting game, it's like a one player fighting game. It's like one of the first ones to have a life bar. Oh, yeah, on the that bottom. down there is a life bar. Yep, um, and it's a, it's a PC game, so you control it with a keyboard. Mm. Um, there's only one punch button and one kick button. Um, it was one of the first with like a, an actual like story and cutscenes because there's like an opening cutscene where there's like a dude. And like a princess, and he was like getting the getting the cell, and then she like slowly walks over there, and then your guy like crawls up from like the side because he like climbed the mountain. He like climbed up to the temple, <laughs> and then he like runs out, 
and then there's another guy that runs out, and then you fight. <laughs> yeah. You know, so, in 1984, it was just, like, it's, like, they're, instead of having to, like, like, read a manual or, like, look up something in order to figure out what's going on in the game, or maybe there was nothing at all, and there was no story, and you just played the game, this one had, like, it gave you a reason to play it. Whereas, like, you gotta save this, this princess or whatever. Um... Save the babe. <laughs> yeah, and uh, um, the person who made the game, which hopefully I say his name right here, um, Jordan Mechner, uh, he, I believe he single-handedly made Karateka. He made the whole game. Okay. Um, then he went on to make Prince of Persia. All right. So he started, <laughs> so he started the Prince of Persia series. Sweet. Um, the next one, a year later... In 1985, we have uh, Yi'er Kung Fu from Konami. Yi'er Kung Fu? Yi'er, Yi'er is uh, Y-I-E, and then Air is just A-R, and then Kung Fu. Oh, okay. Uh, it's also a one-player game. It's, uh... Yeah, that one. Yep. Um... I feel it's like a, I've seen this before. It's a one-player game. Uh, it controls with a joystick and two buttons. So there's just one punch button and one kick button. Um, and it has, uh, it's basically you, it's, it's much more, it's even a bit more like a traditional fighting game because, like, this screen is just, like, where you fight, um, and you fight, there's 11 different opponents in the game, um, that you fight against, so, like, each of them have, like, a gimmick that you have to figure out and learn how to beat. Yeah. Um, but it seemed like a really cool game. I think I think it got ported to consoles, but I, I don't remember. Yeah, it has an arcade archive. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it seems pretty cool. It's, that, that was the first one, I mean, besides Karateka. Because Karateka, even though Karateka is a cool game, it's kind of slow. You know, kind of like... It, I mean, it's like Prince of Persia. It looks like a Prince of Persia game. Right. And they run kind of slow. It's it's kind of a slow game. But this one's got a bit more speed to it. It, it looks like even now it would still be fun. Um, so, the next one I have, uh, same year, 1985, is uh, Way of the Exploding Fist by Beam Software. Way of the Exploding Fist? Okay. Which, it's uh, basically Karate Champ, but better. Alright. So it's basically like a Karate Champ remake. It's like up upgrade. But that's what it's called, yeah. Karate it, Champ Deluxe Edition. It controls with a joystick and one button and has about 18 different moves. But at, at least from what I've read, it seems to like it like plays better. It's like basically yeah. an improved Karate Champ. Like yeah, it, it, it looks, looks the same better. idea. Yeah, it, it looks, looks better. Idea. It plays better. The premise is about the same versus you and one other person. Just moving around, you hit each other, you yeah. just get a point. Um, but then in 1985, there was also uh, International Karate by Sy by System Three. Just all about karate, huh? Well, that's where it started. That's what people thought of when it came to fighting. The International Karate. Um, so this one's a Karate Champ clone. Oh yeah, it's basically they, they Karate Champ. Uh, it controls with a joystick and one button. So we're still up to just a joystick and one button. Um, so still we're doing. Atari, uh, it <laughs> was ported to the U.S. as a World Karate Championship in 1986. So it didn't get. It took a year to get ported to the U.S. Mm. and they changed the name. Um, and then International Karate Plus released in 1987. Plus, which, which I believe was Japan only. They like upgraded it, and International Karate Plus was one of, if not the first fighting game with Dramatic Battle. <laughs> oh, 2v1? Yes, where you and a friend can fight the AI. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Yeah, I was like, that, that's cool. I love I love stuff like oh, that. Oh, yeah, yeah, I see one. Yep. International Karate Plus, there's three people. Yeah, yeah, where you and a friend can fight the AI. <laughs> see, that's cool. <laughs> they System 3 thought of it first. Um... <laughs> And then, then we get into the much more recognizable stuff. Because now in 1987, Street Fighter 1. <laughs> or, you know, Fighting Street. <laughs> fighting Street. <laughs> um, yeah, also known as Fighting Street or, you know, just Streets. 
Yeah. Streets. Ryu from Streets. <laughs> um, this is Ryu from Streets. So Street Fighter 1 was one of the first fighting games. It was, it was known as one of the first fighting games with special moves. Yeah. Where Ryu had, like, Haruken, Shoyuken, and Tatsu. Um, so if you look up the arcade machine... It controls with... It still controls with joysticks and a button. I can see in the distance from this one. Uh, you're gonna want a bigger image. So, it controls with a joystick and a button. Yeah, arcade machine. It's, uh... Uh... That one? This one. So, and it controls with a joystick, and those are the buttons. Two big buttons. Look at how huge those buttons are. <laughs> the buttons are huge. You have to, like, punch them. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you have to, like, punch the buttons to make stuff happen. Dang. Yeah, so there's a control stick and two big buttons that you have to punch. Oh, here's a better. Yeah, here's a better one. Yeah, there's a punch button and a kick button, but they're huge. <laughs> it's like a little saucer plate. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. The, the the arcade it looks very wide because of how big like the buttons are and stuff. Yeah. It's like it's like because there was two long. players, so they had to fit two of them on there. Yeah, it's very long. <laughs> um, <laughs> but Street Fighter One was also one of the first fighting games to have like real like recognizable characters like Birdie and Sagat who are still around today. <laughs> and Ryu and Ken. Yeah, and Ryu <laughs> obviously. Well, I just meant like rec like opponents. No. Oh, yeah. So it was like you recognize the characters that you fight against. Oh yeah, and then um, you get to, and then you have to pick a side, either Ryu or Ken. Yeah, player one has to be Ryu, and player two has to be Ken. And then you can be either side. But they're the same in Street Fighter One. Yeah, it's just color. <laughs> Do you want want white gear or red gear? Yeah, yeah, but um, dang. But yeah, so it was 1987 was when Capcom finally stepped into the ring with fighting games, um, because then in '91 is when Street Fighter Two came out. And then, obviously, and that's also when fighting games started having more than two buttons, because Street Fighter 2 had six. <laughs> right. And so, now, it gives you, it's the first game to, like, start giving you more options. Because instead of just having, like, one punch button and one kick button, you had, like, three different punch buttons and three different kicks. So it changed, like, their power and their speed. And mm. it just, it was something more to think about when it came to playing these games. Mm-hmm. Which is very, which is when they made you start using your brain <laughs> and you weren't just like, oh, this move reaches further. So it's like, oh, kick reaches further. And then you basically just only use kick. <laughs> Ooh. Wait, when, um, when was Street Fighter 2? 1991. Oh, okay. I believe the arcade version was 1991. Yeah, it was 91. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, but also in 1991... Not long after Street Fighter 2 was Fatal Fury 1. <laughs> yeah, Fatal Fury. Yeah, and then, uh... But Fatal Fury 1 controlled with a joystick and three buttons. Because there was a punch button, a kick button, and a throw button. Yeah, throw was a button. <laughs> yeah. Not like yep. forward and punch. Yeah. So, um, because I think in... in I don't even know where... I don't even know if there were throws in Street Fighter 1. I would assume there wasn't. Uh, I always just I assumed know. that there wasn't. But in Street Fighter 2, it was just heavy punch. If you hit heavy punch in a direction and you're next to your opponent, you would throw them. Yeah. Whereas in, in Fatal Fury, you have to hit a separate button to make throws happen. So you can't make them happen by, like, uh, by luck. Which eventually evolved into the, nor the norm, where you have to hit a separate button for throw, or a combination of two would be a throw. Just finish my coffee. All right. <laughs> um, but yeah, and then Fatal Fury is also the game to introduce lanes, where you had two lanes <laughs> two that you lanes. could jump to, and also like attack from. Mm. Um, which is pretty cool. It's very different. And then yeah, also like after Street Fighter Two, there were devs from there were like developers from Capcom that left and joined SNK and made Fatal Fury. <laughs> yep. Um. And in the arcade version of Fatal Fury 1, I don't know about the home version, but in the arcade version, um, if one player was doing the arcade mode, and uh, because in Fatal Fury 1, 
Um, you could only pick one. You could pick one character. You could only play as either Terry, Andy, or Joe. They were the only playable characters. Right. Um, but if you were like at the arcade playing Fatal Fury One, um, and so and like player two jumped in, um, it would restart the fight. Player two would pick a character, and both of you would fight that character. And then when that's over, then you would fight each other. And then whoever wins that moves so on. So it's a dramatic battle. Basically, yeah. <laughs> you, would, you, would, you would essentially restart the fight as a dramatic battle against the AI. And then when you beat the AI, then um, then you would fight each other. Yeah, because it's like the idea, oh, you're going through one, and then like someone suddenly appears. And it's like, okay, I can team up with you to take them out. It's like, okay, but who moves on? Yeah, because <laughs> only one person can move on. So, <laughs> well, who so then you have to fight each other. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, that's that's pretty cool. It's su- it, it's It sucks that only Fatal Fury 1 did it. Actually, Guilty Gear Strive kind of does that with its like story mode. Like, not the, the actual story mode, but like the arcade mode. With some characters, um, when you're going through fights, you'll, like, fight someone, like Soul, for example. Like, he fights Kai, and then when you get up to the final match against Nago, then Kai shows up. And then, like, the two of you can fight him. Mm. It's kind of like that, except they're all AI. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I always thought that was cool, and I wish, like, something like that could happen. Even in, like, arcade games now, like, it would be cool if you could do stuff like that. Going off on a little Guilty Gear Strive tangent a little bit, uh, I do kind of wish they had either a dramatic battle mode where you get two on one, or just have, or just have like a scramble. So yeah. Two v two. Yeah. Honestly, I feel like Strive is the game that could do that to bring back scramble battle. I could see Strive being the game to do that because I mean I played Strive during the betas and I did have fun. I never bought it, so <laughs> yeah. even though it does, even though like I was a Potemkin player because he was just fun, uh, because I liked him in uh, Rev Two. He's at least from what I could tell, he's not good though. So I just played Jam instead. I just played Jam and Venom, but uh, but I did always like Potemkin, and now he's he's good in Strive. Like they balanced him out, made him better. Um, but yeah, I just I never bought the game. But if they had something like a scramble battle, like Street Fighter Cross Tekken had, I would absolutely buy it. Because I remember back in the day when the the online was active for uh, Street Fighter Cross Tekken, I played dramatic battle, like I played scramble battle online all the time on my PS3. <laughs> didn't always run well. A lot of the time it didn't run well, but it was so much fun. <laughs> right. That was like my go-to game for a long time. <laughs> That back in the day, oh man. And then back um, when, and then back when we played Street Fighter, Street Fighter Alpha Three, we would do dramatic battle a lot. Yeah, yeah, just because <laughs> or dramatic survival. Oh yeah. Where you have to fight every character. <laughs> yeah, it was two of you yeah. fight every character. Was, that was it's, dramatic survival was pretty hard. <laughs> like that was tough, <laughs> but it was so much fun. <laughs> Could you get yeah, to fight every character on like every stage? Because every character got a stage. You're essentially, it's almost like a around the world. It's almost like the world, uh, world tour mode in uh, Alpha Three Max. Yeah. Except me. Yeah, yeah. Um, except with two players, so it was cool. Um, and then so next, uh, after Fatal Fury, uh, moving on to the next year, 1992, is when we got Mortal, Mortal Kombat. Kombat. <laughs> Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat um, like too. Can't forget that. <laughs> yep. Uh, in which it control with a joystick and five buttons. Because there's two punch, block. There's two punch, two kick, and one block. Yeah. Yeah. Mortal, Mortal Kombat. Kombat. You could not just hold backwards the block. You had to actually like hold the block button. No cross ups. <laughs> yeah. So cross ups were not a thing in Mortal Kombat. <laughs> um, which uh was uh, that was like big when it happened where it was just like oh there's actually like a you have to remember there's a separate button you have to hit it says holding back won't block for you not only that but I, I think they also I think I remember hearing that they originally made a block button so then like special moves that involve up wouldn't cause you to jump so you could like hold so you could hold block do that and then like let go and hit a button yeah yeah um although unless you're like uh, like for example there's well one for one way you didn't need to do that was like Kung Kung Lao's teleport, which was just down up. Maybe yeah. teleport like behind the opponent. Because he was supposed to crouch and then he would just spring up where you didn't need to do that. But uh 
if there were like fatalities that like ended it up because Mortal Kombat was also the first one to have like fatalities where like they let you kill your opponent when you beat them. Um, uh, just just to note, Kung Lao is not in the first game. Yeah. Oh yeah. I was talking about two because that's that's the first one I played. I didn't. I started with two. I didn't play Mortal Kombat one. Um, but yeah, so I'm I'm not familiar with any of like the special moves in the first Mortal Kombat, like anything from like Kano or Sonya because they weren't even in two, right? Um, but uh, but yeah, it makes sense. It's just that I'm also not good at Mortal Kombat because I'm just so unfamiliar with a block button. <laughs> I just never played games like that except for two. And I was never all that good at two because I only played Liu Kang and Sub Zero because Sub Zero is my favorite, but Liu Kang's the only one where I knew all of his moves. <laughs> I knew how to do all of his moves, but I'm sub I liked Sub Zero, and everyone else liked Scorpion, so it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Differentiate from the norm. Be different. It's not so different anymore. Like obviously, both Scorpion and Sub Zero have a huge fan base now, but back in the day. I was, like, the only Sub-Zero fan because everyone likes Scorpion. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Which, I mean, I did like Scorpion. I just like Sub-Zero more. Uh, but that, and now, uh, also in 1992, was Fatal Fury 2, uh, which uh, controls with a joystick and four buttons. Uh, so instead of having just punch, kick, and throw, now you have two punches and two kicks. Throw is, what, double light? Uh, I think throw was just heavy punch. I think they did what Street Fighter did. And it was just like heavy punch in a direction near your opponent would throw them. Um, there was something in, uh, Fatal Fury 2 called an, uh, evasion attack. Which was like a dodge and attack. It was like a counter attack, basically. Um. And it also introduced, uh... It also introduced a desperation attacks where when you're down to a quarter of your life or less, you can do a super if you do the correct input. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so it was the first one to have things like that, like a, like an actual like counter attack instead of just like hitting your opponent first. Mm. It was more like a dodge and hit. And then also like it was the first one where it was just like when your health's low, you get like a super, which was then taken by Tekken because then Tekken started doing that. Well, in seven, but because Tekken seven does that. Or when your health's low, you get, like, a super. It's like, I feel like Street Fighter 2 kind of did that, only it was more like, if your opponent's low, then you get, like, a super. Well, in Street Fighter 2, it was, you actually got, like, a meter. Yeah. You didn't get a meter in, in Tekken or in uh, Fatal Fury. Your health had to be low, and then you get one. You could do it once. It was kind of weird, because in Street Fighter 2, you got a meter, sure, but then when the round ended, it was empty. So it's like you only got it like at near the end of the match when you're both when either both you are low or just your opponent's low. You just had to know what moves uh, gave you more meter. <laughs> just use those. Um, so then after Fatal Fury two, in nineteen ninety three, you got Virtua Fighter one, which was when they started going three D, and uh, Virtua Fighter one. Had a uh, what Virtual Fighter did was that it had the four, it had a uh, three buttons. It was only three, or was it only two? Did Virtual Fighter go back to two? I don't know. I just a punch. I've never, I've never played it. I believe you haven't played any of the Virtual Fighters. No. Oh, okay. Uh, I played. I played a lot of Virtual Fighter two. It was like my favorite one, and I played the new one on that came out for free. Right. Which, very fun. Um, but no, Virtua Fighter was just uh, three. I believe it's just punch, kick, and block. The only three buttons. Um, and so it was weird because they went... Because, like, obviously Fatal Fury was doing four buttons. And Street Fighter was doing six. It, even Mortal Kombat was doing five. And then Virtua Fighter went back to three. <laughs> just went back to two buttons and a block button but it was like when you could like hit various directions kind of like in Karate Champ where you hit various directions and the buttons to do different attacks even though there was only one punch so like what Tekken does now well Tekken's Tekken's a bit different we'll get to that um 
But yeah, so Virtual Fighter, Virtual Fighter, think of Virtual Fighter as like a 3D karate champ. <laughs> you got a punch <laughs> and a kick, but now you're in the, the uh, but now there's another dimension added yeah, into the exactly. mix. And a health bar. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, and you got life bars because that's, because Street Fighter 1 was, had life bars. Although Karateka was the first one to have life bars. But no one cares about that. <laughs> Some people do. There are some people that grew up playing Karateka, so. Yeah, but I didn't, but, because <laughs> I was a PC game. Didn't start gaming on the PC until, like, the early 2000s. <laughs> um, but yes, but also Virtua Fighter just became big because it was 3D. <laughs> that was a big deal, because 3D was, like, really not a thing yet. And they were just like, oh, man, there's, like, a fighting game where me and my friends can fight with more realistic looking characters quote unquote because obviously that's not the case now like if you've even seen virtual fighter one now like they look terrible but <laughs> but yeah it was just it was revolutionary then um but then 1994 we go back to 2d that's when shaq fu came out <laughs> Oh, yeah, the game. Game of the year. <laughs> yeah. Jack Fu. When you started implementing real people in, in the fighting games. Why not? <laughs> you know, and then Shaq Fu obviously did, like, the, the old... Did, did Shaq Fu have four buttons? That's a four-button fighter, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Three, bu three buttons on Genesis, because that's all it had. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was another thing. The Genesis version of Mortal Kombat, where you have to hit... Start to block. Yeah, start with block. <laughs> <laughs> so there was like no pause unless you had that. You uh, if you only had the original three button Genesis controller, there was punch, kick. I believe there was the two punch buttons, and I think you had to hold C. Was it C and uh, A or B to kick? I, I can't remember either. I never played Mortal Kombat on Genesis because I always played on Super Nintendo. I thought you had to. Uh, wouldn't, didn't you have to like a whole C and do like a combo in order to do special moves? No, I don't think so. I, I could be a, a different game. I'm not familiar. I didn't really look into the Genesis version, but I do remember that Star was blocked so that there was no pause unless you had a six button controller in which then it would be normal. Yeah. Um. <laughs> But yeah, just Mortal Kombat on the Genesis is so weird. So weird. Um, but let's see. But the Genesis version of uh, Shaq Fu was superior than the Super NES. Only because it ran a little better and it had an extra character. <laughs> yes, it only had one extra character, right? Yeah. No, it was two. Because it was the kid and Diesel. Oh yeah, I, f I forgot Diesel exactly. <laughs> yeah, Diesel, I mean, he doesn't matter, but... Um, but yeah, they were in the Genesis version, and the kid makes an appearance in the Super Nintendo version, but you can't play as him. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so Shaq Boo did the, uh, the four button setup, which, there are particular setups of either four or six buttons, and that generally became the standard. Mm. It was about, it was about after Street Fighter, it was a, pretty much after, like, Fatal Fury 2, most fighting games either had four buttons or six buttons. And I think Mortal Kombat was, like, the only one that did five. Right. No one... Very few games had block buttons. <laughs> it just really wasn't a thing. Um, you know, and then also in 94, there was Rise of the Robots. That also happened. Yeah, so... Great. Yeah, don't really need to say anything about that. Trash. 90, <laughs> 94 just was a tough year. Actually, there was a lot of things that came out in 94. They just happened to be, like, the first two. <laughs> yeah. Then after that was Primal Rage, mm -hmm. um, which had a four-button setup. Uh, but what made Primal Rage different was the special moves, where you uh, were done... Special moves were done by holding a button, inputting the motion, then releasing the button. Yeah. Yeah, so Primal Rage was the first one where you had to hold a button, do the input, and then let go, and it would come out. Instead of having to do the input and press it like in Street Fighter or Fatal Fury. Weird. <laughs> it is weird. It takes some getting used to. Uh, but that was how they wanted it done. Maybe they felt it was easier than having to time the button press with the motion. It'd be easier to do the motion than let go. Right. <laughs> Maybe they just thought that would be easier. I'm not sure, but... I, I, 
I can't say for sure if it's easier or not. I, I played very little Primal Rage, so and that was a long time ago. I played it on I Genesis. Haven't. <laughs> I was going to say, we had a cousin that had Primal Rage, and I, I didn't play much of it, but that was, that was years ago. I haven't played it since, so I can't really say. Yeah. Um, then also in 94, that was when Tekken 1 came out. Uh, now, what made Tekken different from Virtua Fighter, because even though they were both 3D fighters... Um, like I said, Tekken, uh, Virtual Fighter just had punch, kick, and block. Um, uh, Tekken, what Tekken did is Tekken was, uh, a joystick and four buttons, but each button, excuse me, was directed to a limb. So, like, one button is left punch, one button is right punch, and then left kick and right kick. Um. And then you would have to implement combos in particular ways to make them work. Mm. Uh, like if you were going to do like left, right, left, like uh, like left punch, right punch, left punch. There's like a typical three button combo. You couldn't just hit one punch button to do all three punches. You'd have to hit like the left arm button, then the right arm button, and then the left arm button. So you'd have to like really remember combos. Um, and also, just like in Karate Champ, you'd hold like directions with either various punches or kicks to make different moves come out. Yeah. So, that was something that apparently still stuck around, that Karate Champ did. I think it was Karate Champ that started it. Yes. Uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, it was. Karate Champ was, like, the first one where, like, you would hold directions and a button in order to, uh, make, like, other moves come out. Um, but Karate Champ did it because there was only one punch. But now, with Tekken, because there's two different punches and two different kicks, and each one does different moves whether you hit directions or not, now there's just, like, you look at, like, a moves list for Tekken, there's, each character has, like, a hundred moves. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's crazy, because they have, like, up, down, left, right, and each diagonal, double taps, triple taps. <laughs> yeah. Like, they're, like, like per limb. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> that's why Tekken, that's why, like, Tekken has, a, has had such a huge fan base, is because there's so many things you can do, and so many different ways to play characters, because obviously you're not going to remember every single move. Uh, and really, you can remember, like, most of them, but they'd be, like, for your character. So it's not like you're gonna remember every character, every move of every character, because that's, like, a thousand moves. Even in, like, the first Tekken, when there was only, like, 12 characters? Like, there weren't that many, but each character still had, like, like, 50, 60, 70 moves. So that's, like, so many different things. You can't expect to remember every single one. Plus, with a game like that coming out, like, in 94, you'd probably only play one character. Yeah. Like, you would pick one that looks cool, and you would pretty much just learn that character. Mm. Uh, but Tekken was big when it came out because of that. It was just, like, there's so many different things you could do, and you would, like, play in the arcade, and you'd see someone do a move you'd never seen before, and you're just like, whoa, what was that? <laughs> You know, and then obviously, like, most of these games, uh, it was around the time, I think, of Street Fighter 1, if not Fatal Fury 1, where, like, story really became, like, standard for fighting games. Mm. Because, like, Karateka did it. Karateka was, like, the first one to do it. Um, but then, it, and I, I don't really think, like, Year Kung Fu or, like, Way of the Exploding Fist or International Karate really had, like, a story of any kind didn't really have much street fighter one like did but i don't think it didn't like the arcade mode it kind of just had like an opening just to like get your attention yeah um and like all the street fighters were really like that they didn't really have like stories that they told you but fatal fury did because like fatal fury was like the south town tournament where terry would climb the ranks to fight geese and stuff uh because geese killed his master and all that but uh or like, killed his father. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, but... Karateka was really the first one to, like, make you feel like you had a reason to play, and not just because it was interesting, but it, like, gave your character a purpose. Uh, and then it really wasn't until, like, Fatal Fury when they started doing that again. Because stories weren't important, it was about gameplay. 
You, if you wanted, to, if you wanted a story, you'd play a different genre. If you wanted a story, you'd watch a movie. <laughs> uh, and then, so after Tekken in 1994, yeah, Darkstalkers, Darkstalkers one, which I yeah. believe was that was six buns, wasn't it? If I'm not mistaken, I, I think believe Dark it was. Was I think? Yeah. But um, Darkstalkers was really one of the first, or no, it's known as one of the first fighting games to have like an like a ground attack, where like yeah, you hit like up in an attack when you're uh, while your opponent's on the ground with good timing, and you'll just hit them while they're down. Yeah, yeah, it was really like the first with that, because that really wasn't a thing. Because in like all the fighting games before it, you're on the ground, you'd have to just like wait for your opponent to get up. So it's kind of just like an extra thing that they let you do. Yeah. And you know, obviously, Darkstalkers has a huge fan base because Darkstalkers is great. See I, see, I like Darkstalkers, but I can't say the ground attacks I'm not a huge fan of. They take some getting <laughs> used to because they're weird. The timing on it has to be right. Uh, the only Darkstalkers I really played was 3. Mm. Which is very fun. That was a good one. It's also the only one that had uh, Jada in it. Um, he was only in three. Yes, he appeared in three, uh, but I mean, I only played Senko, but <laughs> so it didn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but no, there were so many cool characters. It, it, like even all the old characters. I mean, I did play Darkstalkers one, uh, but I played Dimitri because Senko's not in it because she appeared in two. So, but I played Dimitri. Dimitri's cool. So, <laughs> he's the cool show now. Yeah. Um, and also in 1994. The last one for 1994, uh, it's worth mentioning at least, is uh, X-Men Children of the Atom, which is when Capcom started, that's basically the first game in the Versus series, in Capcom's Versus series. Because even though it's not a Versus game, it kind of plays like one, mm. where it's like, you have like your six buttons, except all the characters are X-Men. And I <laughs> believe that was the first one the first and only one that had Spiral until Marvel 2. So that was the game she appeared in, and then she never came back until Marvel 2. <laughs> right. So a lot of people didn't know who Spiral was. Like me, because I didn't play Children of the Atom. The first versus game I played was 2, when we bought it. The first <laughs> on one I played. Yeah, the first one I played was Marvel Super Heroes vs. Street Fighter. Mm. And then Marvel 1, and then Marvel 2. So, but Marvel Super Heroes vs. Street Fighter was what got me interested. I think it was because Gambit was in it. Gambit and Psylocke. Because I don't think Psylocke was in that game. I can't remember. Um, I because remember Psylocke being an assist in the first one, right? In Marvel 1, she was an assist. You couldn't play as her. And then she was playable in 2. Yes. But Gambit and Psylocke were my favorite X-Men. And I, I played Marvel Super Heroes vs. Street Fighter because it was just like, Oh, I can be Gambit. Cool. So I just pick him. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so, it was also one of the first games that was, like, became known for air combos, because that's where they really started. Yeah, hitting them in the air. Kinda, the yeah, there. kinda. It was very, like, minimal in that game, but as the games went on, like, X-Men vs. Street Fighter was when they really started, like, dipping into that. Mm. Um... And now air combos are like a must a lot of the time. <laughs> yeah, a lot of it's games. It's all about air combos. I want to be able to launch my opponent. That's why people still play Marvel 3. It's like, because Marvel 3 air combos are because great. Because <laughs> that's like the name of the game is air combos in Marvel 3. <laughs> yeah. um, now, uh, 1995, we have Soul Edge, which was the first Soul Calibur. Yeah. Uh, and with Soul Calibur had uh what was it um it was Tekken but weapons yes <laughs> it was th not exactly because instead of having like a punch and kick Soul Calibur had a horizontal attack and a vertical attack and a kick and a block so it was a four button fighter but they did it differently because instead of implementing a button to each limb you mm -hmm. would have a button to attack horizontally and a button to attack vertically so and then you could still obviously like hit directions to make different moves come out and stuff. So not quite as many moves as Tekken. You still got a lot of options though. Right. Speaking of options, Valdo. <laughs> yeah. Valdo options. <laughs> yeah, I believe Valdo wasn't. I, I was he in Soul Edge? I don't know. I never played I Soul Edge. I started with two, so <laughs> I, I don't know anything past two. 
because Blink was in two. We got the GameCube version. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, we got the GameCube version, and then later I got the PS2 version. <laughs> Heihachi. Yeah, with Heihachi. With Heihachi's my favorite game. Never, <laughs> he was my never, favorite to play as. Never, never played the Xbox version, but I could I could on the uh, the Xbox store you can get the um you can get the version of Soul Calibur 2 with both Heihachi and Spawn in it. Yeah, the That's HD cool. the H D uh, remaster that has Heihachi and Spawn, but not Link because it, it only That's appeared on PlayStation <laughs> and Xbox, so just Heihachi and Spawn. Yeah. But that is the only way you can make Heihachi and Spawn fight each other. Without having to go to Mugen. <laughs> yeah. Although I will say, um, Spawn is pretty basic in Soul Calibur. He doesn't really do anything Spawn like. <laughs> Not like he does an MK11. No. Of course. <laughs> the only thing he's got is that he has his his battle axe because that's his weapon. But like he doesn't really do like Spawn things. Like in MK11. Spawn does spawn things, and spawn's cool in MK11. Yeah. He's hard to play, because he's kind of slow, but he's he's spawn. But in Soul Calibur 2, he wasn't. He didn't really have any of his powers, at least from what I remember. I never played the Xbox version either. I thought he was capeless. Yeah, he did not have his cape. Um, so that might be a reason. <laughs> it's just, it's weird. I don't know. I don't think I don't think his cape is his power, but... <laughs> I mean, well, I mean, he, he would usually use his cape. For moves and stuff, but... I mean, he could, but I don't think he had to. Um, but, uh, but yeah. Of, of the guests, it, like, I... Obviously, Link was the best one, just because that's why a lot of people bought the game, was because it was a fighting game with Link. Um, yeah. Although, I don't even... I don't know how true this is, but I believe in the PS2 version, it was... The guest was supposed to be Cloud. But they couldn't do it. But uh, due to time constraints, and because uh, Square Enix was just tough to work with, they had to pick a different character, and they picked Heihachi. Yeah, a, ga- a game, that, a character franchise, and stuff that they own already. Yeah, so yeah. Like, well, let's just let's just. Use so they just ours. went. Yeah, they just went and used one of their own characters because Square Enix was tough to work with at the time. So trying to get things to move forward so Cloud could be in the game was just becoming too difficult. So. For anyone out there, I mean, if you're a fan of Cloud, there's always Air Guys. <laughs> yeah. Air Guys, God bless the ring, and Cloud's in it, so what's it doing? <laughs> so why not? <laughs> Just play that one. Right. <laughs> no, no, the game's bad. <laughs> but anyways. Cloud's in it. It's not bad. Uh, yes, it is. Um, after that, there was also Bushido Blade which is very similar to Soul Calibur. I'm not as familiar with Bushido Blade, though. I never played it. Right. There's like three of them, but I never played them. Um, but I, there are plenty of people out there that are familiar with Bushido Blade. Mm. Um, that was 97. And also in 97 was uh, Rival Schools. And yeah, that was uh, when the 3D fighters started getting into the air combos. <laughs> yep. <laughs> because Rival Schools became popular not only for its cool characters, because like... There, there are a lot of really great characters in rival schools like Batsu and Kyosuke and Hinata and uh, and um, what was her name? Tiffany. Yeah, Tiffany. Tiffany and Roy. Character. <laughs> Tiffany and Roy and Akira and Edge and Daigo. They're just they're great rival school characters. Um, and Sakura. <laughs> yeah, sure. Well, I mean, it made sense. Um, and there's also, apparently, I found out when I was looking things up, uh, when I was looking information up, apparently there is a band called Rival Schools. Really? And they did confirm that they were, they named themselves after the game. Alright, cool. So, yeah, there is a band called Rival Schools. They still do anything? I don't know. I didn't, I didn't look into that. Um, I didn't look into that, but... Why don't you on, on Spotify? Probably. Hey. Uh, we're, we're hitting with copyright. Thanks. <laughs> uh, I just want to... Can't play sexual healing here. <laughs> <laughs> that's not what that was. That's the, that's the beginning. No. No, that's a whole notes. Nope. That's the beginning of that, too. Yeah. I have a song that does that, too. <laughs> that was actually that was the weekend. But <laughs> that, that they all start out the same way. <laughs> 
Um, so the last thing Rival Schools, the band, Rival, Rival Schools, the band, the last thing they did was they had an album that came out in like 2013. No. Okay. They haven't really done much since. I listened to them. Um, but their first album was in 2001, so that was like four years after Rival Schools. All right. Um, and then the last game on here that I wanted to mention um, was Guilty Gear. The first one? Yes, Guilty Gear 1 in 98, which was like one of the... Uh, that one was also like combo heavy <laughs> like there's something different about guilty gear not only just like its style and its characters um but like uh um like the air dashing and stuff everything just felt different mm. because i believe guilty gear yeah because guilty gear had a uh punch slash punch kick slash and heavy slash yeah. for the buttons um, but then, like, implementing two buttons made different things happen. Mm. Actually, that may not have been until, like, later Guilty Gears, because I know that it wasn't until, like, XX Accent Core that had, like, the, um, roaming cancels and stuff. Or it may have been Xrd. I really don't, I don't remember. <laughs> um, but, uh... But yeah, that was one of the ones where it was just like, instead of just having like a standard punch, kick, four button set up, they, they wanted to do something different. So instead they just had punch and then slash and heavy slash. Right. Um, and at, at least for now, that was the last one I wrote down. Um, but fighting games have come, at least when it comes to their controls, they've come a long way. Like, they've, they've obviously, over the years, gotten better. Uh, but they, they had some really creative stuff at the very beginning. Uh, like giant buttons. <laughs> yeah, like giant buttons in Street Fighter 1. Having a glove that you would just move around in Heavyweight Champ. Um, and sometimes it feels like something like that is still a thing. Like, with, uh, like with the Wii and its motion controls. It, it's almost like it still has that kind of idea. Well, and even and even when uh, Connect was around, they had some fighters that tried with no buttons. <laughs> yeah, buttons yeah. Instead. The Connect, yeah, the Connect had a couple fighting games on. I think there was only like maybe two or three. There weren't many, um, but that was when they tried fighting games with no buttons, and man, that didn't work. <laughs> but <laughs> I don't know about that. But. Yeah, but um, but yeah, they there's all kinds of stuff that has happened, and I mean. Even now, there's a lot of, uh, there are devs that are trying new things, um, especially on, like, the, like, during the Wii era, there was, there was new things being implemented, like, even, like, with Wii Boxing, if you count that as a fighting game. Yeah, why not? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'd kind of count it, it's like counting Punch-Out as a fighting game. Uh, yeah. well, Punch-Out Wii had two players, so I guess that counts, but, like, the original Punch-Outs were all, like, one player, so, not really. Right. Um, but yeah, it's it, there's all different kinds of ways to play them, and there were all different kinds of styles. They had a lot going on, and and that's only one genre. So, <laughs> so that's the even crazier thing is like there were, and obviously I was only naming like the bigger ones. Obviously, there was a bunch like in between that like people didn't know about. There were probably some of the older ones that we said at the beginning that people didn't know about. Like, a lot of them I didn't know about up until, like, most of the games before, like, all the games before Karate Champ, I knew nothing about. And yeah. then, like, even between Karate Champ and Street Fighter 1, like, Yi Air Kung Fu, I didn't know that. <laughs> and, and Konami did it, because they, they do that. I don't know why. But, uh, you know, and then they, they still, or at least during a time, they still dip their toes in the fighting games with Bloody Roar. Which Bloody Roar is great, obviously because it's Konami. They don't do anything with it anymore. They don't do anything video game related to too much anymore. Not much. They publish games. They don't really make them. Sadly, they do publish them though. So they'll still help games come out, but more often than not, they don't really make games. Mm. Um. But yeah, and obviously, you can tell that all the styles when it came to not only the games but the controls. 
uh, were different based on like the companies and what they thought would work. Right. Like going from uh, going from using a joystick to move and a button to switch between move and attack to uh, having just uh, one punch and one kick that started becoming normal um, to having multiple buttons that would punch and kick. So companies were just coming up with different things that would make make you have to think more when it came to fighting. Kind of like actual fighting. <laughs> <laughs> make you yeah. think more. We don't just stand in more. place you and gotta punch. Th- yeah, you gotta think more about what's going on. You gotta move around more, especially when it came to like Virtual Fighter and Tekken and Soul Calibur um, was when like movement started becoming like like one of the more important things in the game is movement. Yeah. Like being able to move where you want to as fast as possible to try and like confuse your opponent. You gotta like juke them and break their ankles. <laughs> so you get free hits and stuff. <laughs> Low hits. But yeah, there's there's all kinds of stuff going on. And that doesn't even include like the controls for like what you had to do for special moves in all of the games. Um, because Tekken like had special moves, but like not really. <laughs> Right. It was more like just re- memorizing like what direction you had to hit and stuff, um, and Street Fighter like started with like the quarter circle forward, and, like quarter circle back, and like the forward the Shoryuken motion which was forward, down forward, mm. and like the charging moves for like Bison Psycho Crusher or like Guile's Flash Kick, doing like full circles for Zangief spinning pile driver. Having to, I hate I hate full circles. Yeah, they're, <laughs> it's annoying because it starts and ends with up. Like, so, <laughs> um, and then like uh, having to rapidly press uh, kick for Chun Li's lightning kicks. Um, and Honda and Honda's thousand hands. Yeah, punch. and Honda's thousand hands and Blanca's electricity, and like being able to use either punch or kick for Sagat's fireball for his tiger for shot. And low. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then there's like, there's even a, uh, what was it? Um, in Fatal Fury Two, uh, Joe's um, tornado, hurricane upper. You have to do like half circle forward and punch. So that's when like like SNK is really the ones that started like implementing like half circles instead of just quarter circles because Capcom didn't really do that. Right. They didn't really do half circles. They were just like quick, quick motion, as opposed to. Or if you want, or if you want to be like, or if you want to be like Chun Li, Street Fighter Two, uh, Street Fighter Two Turbo, where they actually give her projectile, it's pile driver. <laughs> yeah, it's a full circle with punch. in Street Fighter Two Turbo to shoot out a fireball. That's mad annoying. I never used it, um, but uh. But yeah, then SNK started implementing like the pretzel motion. It's like quarter, quarter <laughs> circle back to half circle forward to do like a power geyser with Terry. And now in KOF 15, everyone's, everyone has a super that does that? Yeah, now in KOF 15, just because there are so many characters, um, and to just make it easier uh, for like a level 3 super is the same for every character. Which is nice, so that way you don't have to like, if, because obviously in... in uh, king of fighters you play three different characters and it's hard to remember when you have to play three characters like each round you could be playing a different character and their controls and like their control setup is completely different mm-hmm. it just makes it easier to remember especially when you want to pull off like a level three in like a desperate attempt to like steal the win and then you just squander it because you hit a wrong direction right like that sucks. <laughs> so, so just having everyone be the same just makes it so much easier. Um, but yeah, there's just so much more when it came to controls. I I wanted to focus more on just like the earlier stuff um, because yeah, like even as we've been saying now, like with K with King of Fighters 15, um, and like with Tekken now, how Tekken's just started introducing supers, um, and all of like the dead fighting game franchises that Capcom has, like, Power Stone. Like, how Power Stone was, like, one of the known, like, uh, um, like, overhead arena fighters. It's, like, one of the first to do that. 
Now arena fighters aren't exactly overhead anymore. Yeah, but they're they're better that way. I prefer them overhead. Yeah, I, I, I can enjoy back. both. I can enjoy both an overhead arena fighter and like a normal third person and like a third person arena fighter. I think I find the overhead ones more fun. Um, and then you have like uh, the outfitters, which is um, like one of the first like platform fighters. Which implemented, like, having to, like, either... I don't remember if you had to, like, hit up or push a button to jump. Mm. Um, I think it had a jump button. As opposed to just hitting up. I think you had to hit a button to jump. Mm. Um, so then, it was a different... And that was also just a different genre of fighting entirely. Like, the overhead arena fighters and, like, the platform fighters. So, all different ways of fighting. All different kinds of stuff has happened, and every time something different happens, they had to come up with a way to control it. Because, like, with platform fighters, it's like, oh, they may, like, involve moves that use up. And, I mean, some devs don't care, but some of them are just like, well, what if you want to use a move that implements up, but you don't want to also make jump up? Because then either only one will happen, and it could be the one you don't want... Or they'll just both happen. Mm. So, it's all a matter of just coming up with a, or thinking about how you want it to control. Because <laughs> even though a lot of the time uh, everyone talks about, like, the game, how it's going to look, what's going to, like, what's going to, like, how it'll feel, like... I know a lot of fighting games now are like pretty standard, like with Street Fighter and with Guilty Gear and King of Fighters um, and Tekken. Like a lot of them, they have their setups, but every once in a while, you get that new one that comes out, and the control scheme and like the control scheme is very important when it comes to like new fighting games, which I feel like I feel like is not really something that's thought about until the game actually like comes out like people worry about like uh like how it'll feel how it'll look what you can do like what's the gimmick is it free to play and all that stuff but yeah. not really like what button will do what more like what you can do and not how you can do it you know like with the uh, um like with multiverses like, when that comes out, that's going to be a platform fighter. Um, but the question will be, will it be like Smash Brothers, where there's just, like, a, a one attack button and one special button, and then, like, two jump buttons and, like, a block button? Um, or are they going to try something a little different? Are they going to implement, like, a different kind of button? Like, will there be an ability button? Like, to use, like, Batman's gadgets, would that be, like, a separate button? Like... We don't know. <laughs> yeah. Or, or like, with, uh, um, I was pretty sure there was something else coming out, but I can't remember. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> as good as mine. Yeah, I can't remember, but. Oh, DNF Duel. DNF Duel, uh, control setup. I'm trying to remember. I only played the first beta. I didn't play it a whole lot. Um, but I know that there's like a, I think there was like a, there was like a standard attack button, there was like a heavy attack button, special attacks were like a separate button. Yeah. Um, and I think you could do inputs for supers, and then like combining moves, and like, it was, it took some getting used to. Um, and then there's like Grand Blue, where, uh, Grand Blue kind of has like a mobile game like setup when it comes to its controls. Where you can still move around with, like, the analog stick. And you still have, like, standard attacks and stuff. But mm. the moves that you're given have, like, cooldowns after you use them. So you can't just, like, spam them. Yeah. yeah. Um, which is, like, what mobile games do now. Um, but it was... They tried something different. Because they were just like, I think it's... Uh, I think because... I think the original Grand Blue was not a mobile game. I don't know anything about Grand Blue. I don't either. <laughs> until sure. Grand Blue Fantasy, until the Grand Blue fighting game came out, I knew absolutely nothing. But I think Grand Blue was like either mobile or like PC. 
um, where that was like a normal thing where it had like cooldowns and stuff. Um, right. And so they they wanted to implement that into the fighting game, which they did. I mean, it, it still had, it <laughs> still has its fan base, but there are some people that obviously don't like it because it's different. Yeah. Um, that's to be expected. Yeah, that's normal. Where it's just like if it's not Street Fighter. I don't care. <laughs> or if it's not Mortal Kombat, I don't care. <laughs> if it's not Smash, I don't care. Um, this is worse. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I think generally that was everything. Yeah. I mean, you know, <laughs> and yeah, like I said, there are a ton of other fighters out there that did different kinds of things. Like Gem Fighter. Gem Fighter had, like, uh, Gem Fighter implemented, like, items that you could pick up and throw and then there's like the tag games like marvel 2 and marvel 3 uh that had like a that had like you implement two buttons to switch characters and then the control scheme is completely different uh snk's tag was completely different where they made you switch between rounds and you couldn't switch mid-round um even Capcom Fighting Evolution tried something like that. Yeah, yeah. It was like, next round you can either switch or you can stay the same character. Mm -hmm. There's only a two on two. Mm -hmm. um, then there's like Dragon Ball Fighters where they implemented different kinds of mechanics like Super Dash and Dragon Rush being technically a grab. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, there's just all kinds of stuff. But this was just more focused on like the earlier stuff. So I think at least in that regard... That's what I got. So, <laughs> right. I don't. I don't really have anything to add because I'm not like a fighting game enthusiast. I play it, but I'm not. I guess I'm not like a hardcore. I guess. I. Say. I'm not really either. I mean, I'm. I'm a bit more into fighting games than you are, but I'm. I'm no. I'm not like a pro or anything. I just. I just like them, and play mm -hmm. them a lot. And I have my characters that I like and will always play if they're in the game. You know, like Senko for Darkstalkers and King for Tekken. And uh, and Yamazaki for King of Fighters, but uh, I'm I'm no professional. I just I just like researching stuff. So yeah. <laughs> that's really I it. see character. I'm I like character. I yeah. play character. I'm there much better at knowing stuff than playing the game. Right. But yeah. So, um, and yeah, like I said, there's I'm sure there are a bunch of games in like the times between like seventy six and ninety four that I missed that I missed because I only named like a couple of them and there were plenty like I didn't mention tournament fighters like TMNT tournament fighter mm -hmm. and like uh um uh I can't some think other, of some other things I'm sure there are <laughs> others that I can't even think of right now that I didn't mention um but uh yeah, this was just to show... This was mostly just to talk about where it started and where we went. And things are just so different now and they're going to keep changing. Um, but that's basically the end of the episode. So, as things change and as games come out, you just adapt and keep on fighting as long as it's fun. You know, in the game, of course. Yeah, it works for me. Unless you're unless you're like a professional IRL fighter, you know. You know, if you're in like the UFC or whatever, heavyweights, boxing. <laughs> yeah, you know, whatever. <laughs> that doesn't really change. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so for this episode, that's gonna do it. Um, we'll come up with another subject and maybe do some research if we need to. Maybe we'll talk about. Uh, couldn't tell you, but Chemco stuff eventually. Yeah, <laughs> obviously more Chemco stuff's gonna come up. More uh, attempt to play clips are going to come up on this channel, so we'll do our best to make things regular. I'm not possible. really, <laughs> at least I, we don't have any kind of schedule on this channel. Things just kind of go up, except you do uh, your streams once a week, generally. Try to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, when possible. You have streams that go up. And about 90% of the time, 95% of the time, it is either a, a Chemco game that you're playing, which currently is... As Divine Menace. As Divine Menace. Um, or it's Crusade. <laughs> so it'll be one of the two. Um, and then also we have like Crusade character trailers that we work on. Mostly you. 
um, yeah, and that go up on here. And I did want I did want to do another, um, like a, mon like kind of like kind of like a crusade montage thing like I did with Beauty Hood. I do I do I do want to do another character. Mm -hmm. just, don't, just don't know who. No, but okay. I want to do another. Um, one. But yeah, there's all kinds of stuff that goes up here. So like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, even just watching is greatly appreciated. And yeah, works for me. <laughs> we'll see the next video that comes up. All right.